Hello, everyone. I was just messing around there while we were getting started. Let me pull up my script because I actually, sometimes I write a script about what I'm going to say. Hello, Bob. How you doing? Let me know if it sounds good. We're getting started here with a live stream this morning. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Thank you for being here. Dermot, hello. It's good to see you from Ireland. Yes. Is it about 3.15 p.m.? Something like that. And it's snowing in Hurricane, Dean says. <laughs> really? Well, it's it snowed yesterday here. Yes, it did. WX in Ireland. Not sure what that means. Let's see. I'm looking at the chat here. Cold here, Dean, but no snow. Yeah, what, is, what does cold mean? <laughs> Today, it's this morning, it's like 22 degrees outside here in... Uh, in Idaho, southern Idaho. Actually, it's western, southwestern Idaho. Not too much in the corner, but over west of Boise. All right, um, we're going to get started now that a few people are here. <coughs> Today, we're going to talk about intros to songs in a general way, but specifically, we'll talk about your song, which was written uh, music by Elton John and lyrics by Bernie Taupin. Yeah, let me move my let me move that over to the other side here because so I can I can look at it. Um, but I would like to say I found out yesterday, last night, it was a little sad that David Crosby died on January 18th, 2023 at 81 years old. I uh, just wanted to mention that because it was kind of a shock to me. Um, I love David Crosby. He was a founding member of the Birds and also of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, which later became Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And we are definitely going to miss him. For anybody who's interested, I have guitar lessons of Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds. David Crosby was part of that. And also I have a uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash song called Southern Cross. And I did that. And I also did a cover of that one. I And I think I did a cover of Turn, Turn, Turn also. You will find in the description of this video, a video lesson um, that goes to, oh, no, actually, <laughs> you will find in the video, in the description of this video, a video lesson that goes to your song, a guitar video lesson, but I just wanted to mention uh, David Crosby and what a sad thing it is that he passed away. Um, let me look at my chat and see if anybody has anything to say about that. Uh, yeah, yesterday, meaning the 19th. I, I, I read, uh, Bob, that it was actually the 18th, but 18th, 19th, so there's conflicting stories out there about when he actually, uh, when he actually passed away. So I'm sure we could probably find out. All right, let's get to some things that we're going to talk about today. <coughs> I might do something else on uh, David Crosby later, but uh, I just wanted to mention that. And and also we lost uh, another le uh, guitarist, uh, Beck, what's his name? Jeff Beck. We lost him uh, a few days ago, a week ago or something like that. Um, I don't remember the date. I was not a big Jeff Beck fan, but I did listen to him in the 70s, and um, he was an, an inspiration to me also. So let's see. Let's talk about playing the introduction to any song. Um, whenever I do an introduction to a song, whatever it might be, I try to make it playable for one guitar because I do a lot of... Uh, solo guitar playing. And many of you probably do a lot of solo guitar playing too. Maybe you're not in a band. But you can also adapt a solo guitar part to a band situation. So it's, uh, it's handy to know both instead of just knowing a little bit about it and letting everybody else in the band uh, take the intro. But I like to develop an introduction uh, to a song and we're going to talk about your song specifically, the Elton John song. Let me um, put a capo on the third fret here just for a minute. I'm going to take it off in just a little bit. When I put a capo on, it changes the tuning on my guitar. I'm using my classical guitar today. This is an Ibanez classical guitar. It was made in 1976. Love this guitar. 
It's the guitar I've had the longest in my career, in my life. All the other guitars are not quite as old as this one. I had guitars before that, and I regret selling some of them, most of them actually. Let that be a lesson to you. The reason I'm putting a capo on the third fret is because your song is in E flat, but we're going to talk about it and we're going to play it as if we were playing it in the key of C. If you put it a capo on the third fret and then you play a C chord, that's actually an E flat chord. And so uh, I'll show you here in just a second. Just working with my mic here for a sec. So I try to make it sound like the introduction of the song. And when you play notes, there are two ways that you can make a note right or wrong, not counting dynamics. Because if we count dynamics like uh, loud and soft, that kind of thing, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to make mistakes. But the two basic ways that we can make mistakes is playing the wrong note, which is really obvious. You know, if I do this. Right, if I'm playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, it's like, wait a minute, some of those notes were right. And then I did this. Wrong, 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 wrong. As far as the pitches go, right, that was terribly wrong. But I got something right. Do you know what it is? <laughs> it's the rhythms. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Now that's the, uh, that's the rhythm. Now let me get my metronome out here. It's on my phone. I use something called Pro Metronome. I do not use the paid version. I use the, that's too slow, little star. Hear that? That's what it looks like right there. Love this metronome. It's fantastic. It's not in. Is that better? It was a little. Bit, it was a little blurry a second ago. Bum 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 bum. That's the other thing that you can get wrong. You can get the note wrong, and you can get the rhythm wrong. If you get the note wrong and the rhythm wrong, everything's wrong. If you get the note wrong, but the rhythm right. It's half right. If you get the note right and the rhythm wrong, it's still only half right. So you have to get the rhythm and the notes right. So when you play an introduction, for instance, uh, for your song, if you listen to the piano part, because it's Elton John plays the piano. If you listen to the piano part, the rhythm is this. Okay, let me see if I can. Dum, da, dum, da, dum. I'm gonna get a. Is that loud enough? Can you hear that? One, two, ready, go. That's the rhythm of the introduction to your song. Now, I used to play a, a, a game with some of my friends. Uh, I can't remember if it was before I was married or after I was married, but I remember being over to a friend's house and a very good friend, very good musician, pianist, and his brothers were there and there were some other people there too and we were having some fun and, and I don't know how it started, but we started uh, playing a game of Guess This Song and it went like this. We decided, okay, let's do uh, movie themes, all right? And... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to clap the rhythm to a movie theme, and you try to guess it. That's what we were doing. So this is the one, I remember this one very clearly, because this was about, uh, this was after 1977, so that's a clue about what I'm going to clap. You ready? Here it goes. Okay, do you know what that is? I'm going to look at my, my chat and see if anybody guesses it. You guys are still talking about uh, 
uh, David Crosby and his life. And that's great. That's not a problem. Okay, so that right there, I'll do it again. Let's see. I'm going to give you a... Did you guess it? It's the main theme to Star Wars. Da, 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 da. So we would do that, and that was something that we loved to do. There you go. That's the Star Wars theme. Yes, Bob. Yes, Dean. Fantastic. So I think these guys had a little bit of a, a hint because we talked about that in one of our discussions. <laughs> So what you have to do when you're playing a song like, let me see, let me pull up uh, your song. The chords are C. It's really important that you play the right chords. So the chords that I'm going to play, let me put them on the screen here for the introduction to your song. Come on, there we go. I'm going to play a C chord. And then I'm going to play an F chord with a C bass. And then I'm going to play a, a G with a C bass. Excuse me. That's wrong. Let me tell you right now. That is wrong. No, no, that's right. Sorry. This is a G chord. This is a C bass. Okay, I, I got confused there just for a second. I'm not perfect, right? And then we go back to F with a C bass again. And uh, the rhythm is ba 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 da 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 da. So what I do is this. It's a little bit funny, and that's how I do it, right? So it doesn't matter, really, that you're not playing exactly the same notes that Elton John did on the piano, but the rhythm is really important, and the chords are really important. Those are important, but the exact notes are not as important. In fact, if you listen to a recording of Elton John playing it live at the BBC, I think it was, 1971, you'll notice that when he does that introduction, actually the video that I saw, he I didn't hear the introduction to the song, but he comes back and plays like the intro between a verse and a chorus or something like that. He doesn't play it exactly like he did on the record. Surprise, surprise. But the rhythm were exact were rhythms were exactly the same. So this is really, really important. <coughs> That's the secret. That you play the rhythms correct, and it doesn't matter if the notes are a little bit different. Uh, let's see. Oh, give me a thumbs up, you know, if you're liking this and, and you're getting something out of it. And also, uh, let's see, I already told you about the guitar link in the description, right? All right, let me pull up. Let's see, where is it at? Here it is, your song. I'm going to put it over here so I can see it on my screen. I wish I had three screens now. I only have two. I did that wrong. Let me try it again. I'm messing up. It's a little bit funny. And let me take this off the screen so you're not distracted by it. This feeling inside, not one of those. And we keep going. Now, when you're singing the song, <clears throat> or when someone is singing the song, it doesn't really matter what you're doing with your, with your notes. Like, you could be strumming it. Right, like this. Or you could be finger-picking it. Because when you're playing, when you're singing the melody, 
It's a little bit funny This feeling inside I'm not one of those who can easily hide One of the, one of the things that's really important about that is that the vocal is right out front, that you can hear it, and so the background, what's happening in the background with the guitar or the piano or whatever it is you're playing, um, that is kind of secondary. The chords are really important, but the exact rhythm, what you're doing, is not as important. So I did a couple of, uh, I'm going to take the capo off and play it without the capo. Just so for those of you who don't have a capo, you can see what I'm doing here. Sorry. It's a little bit funny. What's the next chord? This feeling inside. I'm kind of going back and forth between strumming and finger picking. I don't really have this worked out on something that I'm exactly going to do with finger picking. I really appreciate and I like doing it with finger picking. Now, one of the reasons I'm using this guitar, which is this classical guitar, is that it has an amazing ability to hold bass notes. See that? I had a, a Taylor 510 once. Uh, I got rid of it. And the reason I got rid of it is because I would play this G note and it would go gone. I'm like, what? I, I didn't discover it until I've had it for about a year, year and a half. I was playing it one day and I'm like, I was trying to get that that G note to really, you know, I was playing some kind of a chord. And that's what I was doing here. Listen to those bass notes. Oops, sorry. It's a little bit funny. Now when I'm playing this, it's like... I, I play the bass note and I hold it. See that? I got rid of that Taylor guitar because it just couldn't hold notes like that. Now my other guitars are pretty good. And my, um, my Blue Ridge is pretty good at that too. But this one is just amazing with holding those bass notes out, the sustain on those notes. Um, I tried a lot of different things with, uh, with that Taylor. I, I changed out the bridge to a bone bridge, bone nut, different strings, had it adjusted. I had all kinds of things, everything I could think of to make it work, and it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't sustain a note. It might have been the bracing or something of that particular model. I don't know, and they might have changed the bracing later in the 510, but I couldn't stand it. I had to get rid of it. <clears throat> so that's really, really important, is that you, uh, I, I love to, when I'm playing, I think that the bass notes are super important. Don't have much money, but boy, if I did. See right there on that G, G sus4. I didn't hit that G note again. It's just like going right. I'm still playing your song. Now, if you can get my lead sheet in my book, in the description are links about how you can get my book. I'd be glad to give it to anybody, and it's not very expensive. It's not like it's $100 or something like that. You would be surprised how much it is. I'm not going to tell you how much it is because I want you to go look. <laughs> In the description, it tells you how much it is. You can sign up with me at Patreon. You can sign up with me at Subscribestar. You can make a donation over at PayPal. I will send you my book with updates. You can hang out with me. I, get, I send out emails to my subscribers. And you know what? I had a subscriber the other day at Patreon, and he said, Hal, have you ever done this song? And I, I said, oh, wow, no, I haven't. So I did a video of that song. I think it was uh, it was the Paul Simon song that we did just recently. 
I came out with two videos. I came out with a cover video, and I came out with a guitar lesson video. And um, and part of it, the reason I did that was because he wanted, um, his name is John, and he wanted uh, the strumming version of uh, the boxer. And I thought, you know, there's not, I didn't see any strumming versions of the boxer out there, so I, I just said, I'm going to do it. So I did that, posted it, and then I posted the next day um, the guitar lesson video, and he came back to me and said, oh, that's great. I really love your guitar lesson video. I wish you'd do a cover. It's like, I already did a cover. Let me tell you, people, you need to learn how to search or need to check or something. Learn how to go to my uh, YouTube channel, or if you're on Patreon or Subscribestar or something, you need to learn how to search in those places for you know, videos. If you don't know what to do, you need to figure it out. There are search bars there, and you can type in. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now, the other day, I was searching for one of my songs, and I couldn't find it. I don't know why. It didn't come up. And I had the title right and everything. So, you know, if you have trouble finding something, get in touch with me, lessonswithhow at gmail.com, and I will get back to you. I only have like 90 something thousand subscribers, so I'm not that busy, right? <laughs> <laughs> also, on a video I did, um, I think it was, let's see, I'm just looking here, I think it was either Southern Cross or Turn, 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 uh, I had to share monetization with the copyright owner, I mean, sometimes... Like today, you know, if I'm playing your song and the algorithm says, this is a copyrighted, you know, you're doing a cover of a copyrighted song, I can dispute it. And let's say this uh, video gets, you know, 10,000 views or something like that, which it probably won't because some, not everybody goes to live videos. Uh, but uh, I think like on one of those videos, I made a dollar ninety-seven, and it was published five years ago. What? Yeah, that's why I really appreciate when you donate a little bit to me, even if it's just $2. I mean, that's great. I need about uh, 1,000 people donating $5 a month to really do this full-time. I do teach. Okay, where am I at? Let me go look at... Uh, guys, let me go look at the... Abigail. Hello, Abigail. Orozco, I subscribed to your channel some days ago learning a rainbow connection for my dad's birthday, which was today. So I'm happy to see you're now doing one of my favorite songs. Thank you very much, Abigail. Appreciate it. Cecil, hello, Cecil. Thank you so much. Brilliant. I have to go somewhere now. we we'll watch later. Okay, great. No problem, Cecil. Let's see. It has a piano sound as well. Let's see, let's see. Mel says, love this song, and it will be great to play it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Dermot, you've got to finger pick how it sounds more like piano. That's true. It does. I'm messing up. Thank you, JFJ, GFJ. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. I bet, I bet you're from a different country and you don't speak English very well. Um, I'm just guessing, just guessing. GFJ says monsters. I don't know. I'm just looking back at some of the uh, some of the comments here. Okay, love you guys, really do. Appreciate you very much. Okay, let's see. Twelve likes, fantastico, fantastico. And I'll do it with a Spanish accent. So I'm not going to teach the whole song today. Let's see here. Um, because I did I did a video on that. And it's in the description. The link is in the description. Um, there are a couple of changes that I did to that video that I've done to the lead sheet also as I was studying it this week. Um, for the D minor, I buy a big house where... I have a D minor. But I like a D minor 7 a little better. We both could live. And also, when I get to the chorus, on my other video, I think I talked about um, how, how wonderful life is. 
And then I think I went to a D minor. While you're in the world. I was listening to John Elton John play it, and um, I think he just stays on an F. How wonderful life is while you're in the world. At the end of the chorus. And the reason um, it might be like, is it a D minor or it isn't an F? An F chord has F A C. Those are the notes in the F chord. The D minor has D F A. So F and A are both notes in both of those chords, F and A. So it really matters what bass note you're playing. You know, if you're playing the F bass note, if you're playing an F chord with a D bass like this, it's actually a D minor seven. So those can be mixed up and they can actually be substituted. I mean, it doesn't sound too bad. How wonderful life is while you're in the world. I, I keep playing that wrong. Because I like to do that G chord right there when I say world, world. Go into the G sus4, back to G. Let's see. So those are a couple of changes that I made, and you will find them in my book now. Let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, at the end of the song, we have this. We go out, you know, just like you did when you went in. All right. Are there any questions? I'm going to look and see if there are any questions. Nope. Nothing else has been posted. Thank you very much for coming. And I appreciate you very much. I know some people have come and gone. I think we had like 19 people all together at one point here sometimes. And a lot of you, you know, like there's probably at least 10 of you who have been here the, about the whole time. It's been great. Love it. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to go hang out with my subscribers and my the different people. What's the third chord in the intro? Ah, uh, Yes. Glad you, glad you asked, Bob. Uh, the first chord is C. Second chord is F with a C bass. Third chord is G with a C bass. It's a G chord, right? And I've got a C bass right there. That's how I do it. Oops. Okay, now I... In my video, actually, I was doing it this way, where I was, I was playing it with uh, the third fret on the E string, open B, open G, and then the C note, third fret, A string, and I was skipping over the D string. Uh, that's how I taught it on the video. So it went like... Like that, but I actually like this better. Okay, and then going down to the back to F with a C bass. And I'm actually not playing the third fret. You can see that I've got my finger right there, the pinky right there. I'm not actually playing that note. I'm playing the A string, the G string, the B string, and the E string. So you could play it like that and leave your pinky up if you want to. From here, bring that down, back to C. It's a little bit funny. F major 7. G with a B bass. This feeling inside. Could be E minor 7. He actually sings the D. Side. Right? That note that he sings makes the E minor 7. So you could play the E minor. Side. Dermot, you're welcome. Okay, I think that's all I need to do today. I don't need to drag this out too long. Appreciate you guys. I've been here for a while. How long have I been here? I don't know. I have to look. It'll tell me at the end for at least a half an hour. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here, Dermot, uh, Bob, Abigail, Cecil, Mel, GFJ, all of you people. Did I miss anybody? Dean. Anyway, if, you're, if I didn't say your name, I'm sorry. But uh, love you guys, and we will talk to you later. Look for more videos coming very soon again. See ya.